How are we doing? Doing great. Good, good to see you all. Thanks for being here. So, yay. Um, yay. I'm just wondering, I think it's everyone on video that is joining as an expert. If you are joining as an expert and aren't on video, put yourself on video. You can also join on video, not as an expert. Um, how's everybody doing? It's been a beautiful morning, beautiful drive. I'm about to leave town for the holidays. So I'm literally sitting at the airport. And then when you're done, I'm going to hop on a flight and get out of town. So it's been beautiful, quiet morning. Great day so far. Thank you for making time for us and making it work on your adventure. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I would not ever, like, not want to be part of this. So thank you for, you know, the invitation. Thank you. So welcome, everybody. So um, just so you know how today is going to run, um, we're going to introduce the Time Hacker expert panel. They're going to share a little bit about themselves. And then we're going to open up the floor for you guys to ask anything. And the advantage here is um the variety of questions the variety of answers the variety of thinking um the different ways of viewing the different ways of implementing the tools and just really this is an opportunity to get your questions answered it's an opportunity to potentially even get some coaching if there's time um and it's an opportunity to just meet uh, some of our expert time hackers. So I would love to kick this off with you guys just introducing yourself. Um, so I can see Bashak in my top left. So if you are comfortable, let's start with you. Share a little bit about you, about um, how you use time hackers, about your journey and um, anything that you want people to know. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm also so honored to be here. When I first joined Time Hackers, I was like, I'm going to hack my time and be as an expert in some months there. You did it. <laughs> I did it. And next one is the podcast, I hope. <laughs> uh, so I'm Bashak. Uh, when I initially joined Time Hackers, I was still doing my PhD. And for me, that was a big chunk of investment. Even though I actually got a scholarship from you, that was still like one of the biggest amount of money I spent, especially at that time I was just finishing. I didn't have a new job. So it was a very scary time. But I remember in one of the podcasts, you said something about investment units for coaching certification, which brought so much value. And I realized myself like always saying, oh, I don't have enough time. I'm so stressed. And there was just also too many responsibilities. So I was like, this is the, right moment for joining time hackers now that there are so many things this is the, the time to work on that <laughs> amazing and what do you think that you created as a time hacker i mean like i would always hear you say like with your own podcast like how much everything is tied to time but i haven't i think fully grasped it until i started doing it myself and like I was reflecting on like what are the things I see so far. Like I think the biggest one for me is just the ease in life. That because things happen, like today was a very chaotic day for me. I missed a deadline, I made a mistake with something else. There was a half an hour to write an abstract, which I managed. Uh, but overall, like before, I would make these things mean so many terrible things about me. I think that's becoming less and less. I'm like, oh, I, I fucked up. It's okay. And it's not the time that's going to solve it. And then I'm really focusing on like the learnings. Yeah. And I accept that I think I'm like, a, I'm like a work in progress always. And it's like, <laughs> time is not the answer. If I had more time to do something, whatever. In some cases, a little bit, yeah. But focusing on that was, I think, making me really stuck in life. Yeah. Like I got a new job with Time Hackers that like was a big decision for me. And I made a very quick decision that I'm happy about. Defended my PhD. I think my relationship with my partner is so much better because I'm not fixated on what time is gonna bring us. Instead, like how can I communicate better? How can I do mm -hmm. things better now? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah, I think I am like I also love the community. I was very lost. And I didn't really have friends when I first started Time Hackers. 
because of moving so much, changing so many like, and like true time hackers, I both had a family and then with the energy I got from there, like I also created community in the place that I live. I think you remember, I was like, I don't like this place. I don't know anybody. Uh, and it wasn't the time that created it. It was me like being dedicated to do that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I think that is a big point, um, a big thing that we do care about. I think filters through to what we create is the community and is the belonging and is the having a place where you can be yourself and be seen and be vulnerable and be supportive, supported and supportive. Like, and that's what creates relationships. So I love like obviously it's great with the PhD and the job and the time and the relationship yeah. and all of that but I just wanted to reflect that back because that's really cool thank you Sarah hello looking at you hi Vicky hi everyone um yeah nice to be with you this afternoon so I'm Sarah um, and I've been a time hacker since um kind of beginning of August so um through the end of the summer and, and through the autumn. And I think what I would share is the is so I've been listening to your podcast, Vicky, for years. Um, and and I did rest week with you in the past as well. So I kind of thought I was already a like time hacker in training. And I think then what um joining um the program and using it over the last few months has done is just has just kind of taken it up to a level that I didn't really think was possible. And I, I think it's that, like putting myself in a situation where I was opened up to more being possible has created so much. Um, so I joined um when you were in the middle of the self-care challenge. And just the and I thought that I'd really made loads of progress and kind of like prioritizing myself and and so much progress there but actually just being in the community with other people doing that and consistently asking me that myself that question like well what would self-care look like today and and then again the next day and again the next day just really opened up so much more possibility and I ended up having organizing a, a week completely to myself without my children without my husband which was just something that I just would never have considered or, or thought possible before um, and same in terms of you asked Basha, what she created I think the last few months for me has been has been like what I would previously have described as a really busy time and so it was the right thing to kind of join at a time where I needed to take that time hacker skill up a level so I've had a really busy period at work and I've also been building my business alongside that and I wanted to to rest as well and what I've done not really sure how is achieve all three things. I've completed my work project, I've built my my business, and I've had lots of rest. And part of my brain still thinks it's not possible. So it kind of thinks back and goes, well, how did that actually happen? Um, but it's really about using the tools, using the community and and believing actually that it's possible to do it. Yeah. I think that's made the difference. Thank you. And what's so fun there is like, it's like you've achieved it and your brain's still not caught up. Yes. And that's why I think there's such a problem when we expect our brain to be fully on board with like the goal, fully on board with the growth, fully on board with what's possible. It's like, even once you do it, your brain is still going to be like, well, we might have done it, but I'm still not fully sure how, because, you know, when we've been taught to think a certain way or, um, trained to think a certain way about what's possible like we're never going to credit the reality you know the brain allow the brain to catch up is what I'm saying so thank you for sharing that yeah you're welcome amazing Mary hi hi Vicky Hello. hi everyone um I'm Mary I'm a time hacker and I joined time hackers about a year and eight months ago now uh, and I had, just like Sarah, I'd listened to your podcasts. I'd loved them. I loved the fact that they were bite-sized. For me, they were the right size. They, it wasn't overwhelming, but I could really get stuck into them. So I was a big follower already. I joined Time Hackers because I wanted to, I knew I wanted to move out of the employment I was in and into something that was more managed by me. And I thought it would be great if I could take or dig deeper into the whole time idea. 
Um, and I have discovered that it's not a time is not about doing things. And it, it's just been magical for me that it's about what I bring, how I bring myself to anything. Um, it's about the investment in people. Um, it's about what I nourish myself with. It's about whether I get out for a walk, whatever else is on, what I do with that time, where I presence myself. I look after my future self now. And I had never come across some of these concepts. The walks I've done all my life, most of them were stomping through the forest as fast as I could to get the fresh air. And now I, it is completely different. Um, I've created my own rule book that very much I've learned in Time Hackers. And that has been fantastic, especially in the last few months, I've, really understood that I don't have to listen to, I don't have to live by the societal expectations on me. I can actually carve out a new way of, of living. So I've really come into Time Hackers and found that it exploded my ideas about time. And I've used Time Hackers in every area. I've used the principles, the learning, even the relationships in every area. And I have, my main thing I've discovered is that there is time for everything and everyone. And that by not resisting in the moment, but yielding and pausing and stepping back and letting it be a bit uncomfortable or very uncomfortable, and then yielding again and pausing and not resisting is actually the way through. So I, I'm kind of living evidence of that. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's about me. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And I love, I, I remember you created this graph, this like visual design that was like about how you are like planning your week. And it was like a circle and a diagram, like something I had never seen before. And it's just really fun to see the implementation of like exactly what you are saying, not following rules, not doing something someone else's way, but creating, like getting information down in a way that feels like true for you and what that relationship, what's required of us to first do that and believe that we can do that. And then also to like follow through and to create something in like harmony with ourselves in collaboration with ourselves. Instead of, I think what, what often happens with time tools and rules is we create them like in spite of ourselves. Mm. So I love that. Thanks, Mary. Zil, hi. Oh, you have to unmute. Hi. Hi. And I thought I was the only one who was in love with the podcast before we joined. But I guess that's everybody's story and I love it. So just like you ladies, me too, right? Me too. I was listening to the podcast. I was obsessed with the podcast. Like I remember one evening driving, I had to do like a long drive and I'm like, what am I going to listen and I'm like, I'm going to binge on Vic's podcast. <laughs> and I remember pulling over, pulling up the podcast and listening to it the whole drive and then sharing with my friends. And I'm like, you need to listen to her. She's amazing. This work is incredible. So I was in love with your work, with the work of hacking time way before I joined Time Hackers. And then when they find, you know, time finally came for me to join, it was because that decision was because I did not think it was possible for me to create two businesses at the same time. And you guys were LCS. I was coached by Brooke Castillo on a coaching call where I was telling her, hey, uh, I want to build two businesses. But everybody says, you know, build one, then build the other. She's like, no, go build both. And I'm like, but how? She's like, ah, you figure it out. So that was the coaching mainly, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, how? I was thinking about the how and time hackers came as the answer. I'm like, if, if the belief is it, it's going to take a lot of time and it's not possible, then the solution is in hacking time. What if time is not responsible for me building two businesses or not? What if time is not, you know, to blame for my results or for my lack of results. So I have, I just have this new mentality 
around time of, around you know building multiple businesses and it's so interesting because after my I had this mentality shift about time I started meeting a lot of women very successful entrepreneurs who are building several businesses at the same time I don't know how they're doing but some have three four five I'm like gosh this is all around and they have mastered something that I'm mastering inside the program, which is, you know, decision. So interesting because last night I was sitting down, you know, finishing my day, as I told you guys, I'm checking off for the holidays. And I, I, I don't even remember what it was, but I just remember that I was like, oh, I've already decided on what I do when stuff like this comes up. And I remember just telling my assistant, do this and that and that. And it took two minutes and it felt so good. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, we hack time by making decisions. And so we don't have to be thinking about that over and over and over. And yesterday I caught myself like really happy about, you know, that two minute deal with my assistant that could have taken maybe days, right? So anyways, the changes have been incredible and they are mindset changes, but then they show up in your actions, right? My actions. Something big as well is the ability to not only rest, but to sit with the discomfort of resting. So about two weeks ago, my mom, and here guys, I like my family hustle, right? I'm from Brazil. My mom was a badass business owner, always hustling, always. She she still does. My dad and I grew up in that type of culture. And I can work, right? I can hustle. I know how. It's in my blood. But there is shame to rest around my mom. So much shame if she's around to allow myself to tell her, yeah, I'm going to take a nap. So about three weeks, two or three weeks ago, she was around and we were going to a party. So we were going, going, going all day. And the party was at five. When four o'clock hit, I'm like, I need to rest before this party. There's no way I'm going to go on. And I was like, this is going to be so uncomfortable because my mom is here. And, and I said, mom, I've got to take a little nap before the party. And we might be late, but that's okay. We'll be there. So you're going to have to excuse myself for a little bit. And that felt uncomfortable and that felt shameful. So I had to deal with those feelings because I'm breaking generational trauma, patterns, cycles of hustle. And I remember going to my room and laying down and like my brain wants to think about my mom and my mom doesn't care. I don't think she really cares. I think she was happy that I was resting, but it's me, right? I was like, okay, I'm rested. Maybe it was a 20 minute nap and I got up, I was fresh. And I said, all right, let's go, right? So the shifts have been incredible and so many of them. So I think to close this up, I really want to thank you, Vicky, for putting this work out there, for thinking outside the box, right? For letting us, for leading us into this movement, of thinking different about time and about rest and achieving more because of it. Mm. So thank you. Thank you. I think, yeah, the discomfort of rest is such an interesting one because it's almost like if we're seeking comfort, that's why we're seeking rest and allowing the discomfort because the discomfort is temporary and the reward on the other side. So I love you sharing that uh, and your willingness to like see the discomfort as part of the process of rest I think is so powerful for everyone to hear thank you yeah thank you yes Madeline hello oh hi hi so nice to be here so I am Madeline Schwartz I'm a communication coach and a time hacker and I found my way to Time Hackers in a different way than the rest of my peers on the panel. So I'm not sure I had listened to any podcasts, maybe like one or two, but I 
joined the Hustle Free Holidays group two years ago. And at the end of that group, um, I decided I was going to join Time Hackers. And it's been, you know, when I when I saw the pop up for Hustle Free Holidays, I thought, oh, this is exactly what I need. Like time was my biggest stressor, not just around the holidays, that was all year round. And I had tried a lot of different things, planners, time blocking, calendaring, post-its, like lots of different things to try to get a handle on time and none of them worked. And so, you know, the biggest things that I have learned in Time Hackers is that it really isn't about the planner or the method. And I was so relieved to like throw out the system that I was using when I joined and to have permission to do less, to, you know, not try to achieve this vision of like the time blocking ninja that was super efficient <laughs> with my time. And as a result, I have developed so much more self-trust and an ability to make decisions. Like making decisions was also a huge struggle when I joined and I had the story of being a terrible decision maker and it taking a long time. And that is one of the top things that I have learned from time hackers that decisions don't need to take a lot of time and that they don't get more comfortable with time. <laughs> and, you know, some of the other changes that I have made in the last two years was no longer thinking of myself as a person who was chronically late. So I also always thought that I was just that person that was five or 10 minutes late, like all the time. And it caused so much stress in my life because I would be on my way to places. I live in New York City and I'd be taking the subway and I'd be on the train and like not have left enough time to get there and knew I was going to be late and felt guilty about being late. And it was just a huge source of anxiety and changing that, like first changing the story of not being that person that's chronically five to 10 minutes late and then actually becoming the person who's not always five to 10 minutes late has been a really um, remarkable change. And I thank you for sharing all of that. And I also remember you sharing about like the moment when you stopped beating yourself up for being late and saw that like the difference that that created. Yeah, yeah. And you know, that was one of the pieces of coaching that you gave me in in the community, like in a time hackers call. And when I went and looked for places where I wasn't late, I realized, oh yeah, like I pick up my kid every day at school. I'm generally on time. You know, I thought about the school year and there were maybe like, I can think of two or three times that school year where I was a few minutes late and my kid would always give me like the hardest time. Like I'd go and pick him up and he'd be like, you're late. And and after I had, you know, decided like, oh, actually, like this is some place where I'm consistently on time. The next, like the next time that happened and he said that, I was just like, yeah, but like I'm on time to get you like almost every day. <laughs> you know, this this hardly ever happens. I'm always here at the right time. And I just didn't make it a big deal. And it really um starting with like finding finding a place where I was on time was really helpful for being less hard on myself if I was a few minutes late. And so now, you know, I still like had times where I'm running late because something happens on the train or maybe because I just didn't leave when I wanted to leave. And, you know, I, I don't be constantly beat myself up and instead just think like, no, I, I, I'm usually on time. And I happen to be a few minutes late today. Yes, I love that. And I love that share for everyone because so often what I'll hear from people is like other people are criticizing me about this. 
So it must be true. Other people are criticizing me about this. So I must respond to that criticism. And the shift that happened for you there was like, once you stop criticizing yourself for something, your response to someone else, like their words changes, right? Their words don't change. Our response to their words change. So that's such a powerful example for all of us. Thank you. So for everyone that's on the call, this is your opportunity to ask anything. You can literally post in the meeting chat. You can do it just to me. You can do it to everyone. You can also raise your hand and come and like come on video and get coaching. Um, you do that by hovering over the bottom and then clicking the like play time for raise hand. Or if you can't figure out how to do that, just take your video off and unmute yourself. But um this is your time and or also I've got lots of questions for our panel as well. I'm going to start with Joe. Hello, Joe. Hello. I'll put this up. <laughs> That's better. I uh, love hearing everyone's stories. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you perfect. Okay, so my question was actually for Sarah because I loved her story about, um, you know, the week off that she took. And so I as Vicky knows, and other people on the call met um, the group of us in Dallas for the Time Hacker Meetup. And that was the first night away I've had in from my three kids in, well, my oldest is 10, so ever. And there was one night and I loved it. I wasn't worrying about them, which surprised me. I had a great time. I was so glad I did it. I've not done it since. And I'm, I'm thinking, why not? Because there have been other opportunities. I was like, why have I not done this again? And I can see my brain is saying one night was fine because, and the thought is there's more chance for things to go wrong if it's long, if it's a week, if it's even three nights. There's, that's what the thought is, that there's just more time equals more chance for things to go wrong, more chance for me to, I guess, not be there to sort things out. And so, yeah, I was just interested in Sarah's thought, oh, sorry, when she did that for the first, I think she said it was the first time she did it, so. Yeah, it was, Joe. it was the first time for that length of time, definitely. So I've I've had um, like nights away, I think two nights away previously had been um, the longest, but and that had always been me going away somewhere. Yeah. And so a big thing for me was about like, that that was kind of acceptable because I had something to do, you know, I was going somewhere, I was going on a trip, like, especially if I was going with my mother-in-law, you know, that's really, <laughs> if I've been invited, then that's definitely okay to leave the kids at home with my husband. Like th there was something there about like what's acceptable and, and what was different with, with this was that, so we, we had planned to be going to my mother-in-law's with the kids and for just because of like circumstances and trying to like sort out the summer holidays we had this plan where my husband was going to go with the eldest and I was going to keep the youngest at home and then we were going to join them we'd all be together for a few days and and asking myself like well what would self-care be and like what's possible that I kind of came up with the idea of like well what if you take both kids and I don't come at all and it's a different circumstance, but I think that's how I would answer your question is that is that and that felt to me quite unacceptable and really uncomfortable. And so it kind of comes back to that that idea that's already been mentioned about being willing for it to to be uncomfortable because I've made the decision actually that is something that I would like to do. And then I was willing for it to feel uncomfortable that that one, it was kind of unacceptable because they were only like 20 minutes up the road. <laughs> I was here at home, the house to myself. And yeah, I had to kind of also feel uncomfortable about like, well, you know, are their clothes being washed or like things being like taken care of, all that kind of practical stuff as well. So, yeah. so that's what it kind of came down to for me is like being willing to make that decision for me because because I knew that it would have value but also being willing to kind of sit with the discomfort of it that didn't actually last as long as, as I thought that it it might. But that's what I was going to ask, because I wondered if, you know, if it was uncomfortable the whole week, like, but I've got the idea that the week is a long time, seven days is a long time, one night. Yeah, yeah. it so... did for a really long time. And no, it didn't. And I think, like, that initially we did feel really uncomfortable and I think I posted in the group about that and getting that support was 
was really helpful and just kind of being willing to feel that that discomfort I think helped me to to kind of move through it a bit but then it, you know it would kind of come back in in like waves something would happen and 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 yeah just being willing to be like, okay yeah of course yeah that's coming up but I'm doing this for for good reason yeah. and they're totally fine and they're having such a good time and and this is the ideal time that they don't need me because they're with their dad and their wider family and so why not yeah I, I actually never my brain didn't go there to what they would gain from it actually it was all like oh I get the the freedom and the chance to do this and this and this but actually that's such a good point that what do they gain from it mm -hmm. wow. yeah I haven't actually yeah yeah that's a very good point and obviously whoever they're with yeah yeah I think like because because that's one of the things I think that helped me as I was going through the week that actually if I was there the kids would be coming to me and that actually there's a benefit to them having that relationship with their grandparents and with their dad and them figuring stuff out together and me not sort of being over responsible and planning out all the clothes and the washing and things which I find hard to do when they're physically here but actually them being in a different place where I, I can't sort anything out helped me to like leave them to figure that out which is is beneficial for for all of them yeah and that's making me think actually of I was just saying to someone the other day that it amazes me every time I don't know why but with three kids they're like mom 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 like all three of them are saying mom and my husband sat there and like they never say dad dad <laughs> just that. or maybe they do but I've never seen it. I was like of course because you're always there like yeah. that what would that create as well mm. that's okay that's really interesting I was seeing it I was I was just very much seeing it from my you know my point of view my brain my struggles da, da, da. and I yeah I hadn't actually considered all the benefits of that side it's a it's a win-win yeah absolutely I think that's so powerful for everyone to see like our brain by design is going to focus on a ourselves and be on on all the things that could go wrong and all the negatives and just like that simple like redirection towards how could this benefit other people um and really thinking about their experience and what joe did at the end there was not just take it take the experience not just from the week but from like and then what's the impact afterwards well then maybe they're not calling on the couch for me 100 percent of the time like what does our life look like afterwards so then it becomes worth that investment of that initial discomfort that zil was speaking to of like the reward is not just seven days <laughs> uh, seven seven guilt-ridden days it's like those seven days plus the other side so we can see how that will impact the decision of what we're willing to do or not do does anyone else have any um comment on anything like that yeah Madeline yeah I was thinking about I've taken a few trips by myself over the last couple of years and not that my husband had never been alone with our kiddo like I had full faith in his ability to manage that but Two, two birthdays ago, I decided I wanted to go away by myself for my birthday to like a meditation, a Buddhist meditation center. And a lot of people, my husband was supportive of it, but a lot of other people had thoughts about it. Like I remember my mom, you know, giving me a little bit of a hard time thinking somehow that was like some indication of something wrong with our family life or maybe that's just me reading into her comments but like she clearly did not approve um my son was not happy about it like could not believe that I was leaving town for my birthday and I was just okay with both of those things like it was something I had wanted to do for a while and just decided like this is what I'm doing they can be a happy about it it's my birthday I get to do what I want and I don't have to spend it with with them every year it's such a good point and I think it balances what Sarah was saying so well that's like there's benefits and you cannot not do things because of other people's potential response or reaction like um I think it was Glennon Doyle that said like the word disappoint like disappointing others, like who appointed them anyway? Like who appointed them as being like responsible for our lives? Who appointed them in the position of like 
chief decision maker of how I spend my birthday like be willing to disappoint others to a point to yourself if that makes sense yeah and in my case Joe I'll just share like with that particular situation, I was not thinking about the ways it would benefit anyone else. Like I made that decision solely for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. You can do that too. <laughs> but it is, I mean, really, yeah, I see that. It's just, it is very good to, to think of the long-term impact because it's, it's just funny that I'll sit around complaining. Oh, I just hear more, 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 more but I'm not doing anything to change that. So yeah. I could complain for the rest of my life or I could think, hmm, how could, what could we do about this? That's that's just interesting to, si to see. Yeah. Need to... And I even think that's about like in Time Hackers, you know, we teach decision-making as a skill and I think making the decision based off of like the change we want to create, right? So that's exactly what you're just saying there. The brain loves complaining. Complaining is cheap and sometimes it feels like a release. But it's like, what decisions can we make to produce the change that we want? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I just, I think it's such a good reminder that when you feel a pull in your body to do something, I've felt it and then I've been like, oh, let's dismiss it for all these reasons. And because it definitely because of comfort, it's, it's, I know that would be uncomfortable. Or oh, do I know? Because I went away for one night thinking it would be uncomfortable. And it wasn't. So it's that's also good to notice that I I don't need to assume it will be uncomfortable for me. It might not. And so so it, it's just a good reminder. Anytime I feel a pull, I don't need to, you know, to just not dismiss it and yeah. to be well, again, it comes back to curiosity, doesn't it? I could be curious, like what's this pull? What this yeah. what's the advantage of doing this? What it's just exploring it a bit rather than dismissing it for yeah, just for the reasons that your brain immediately offers, like, oh, more chance to go wrong. Because that is an interest. What you said is interesting. Why it's also 50% chance everything goes like, perfectly normally. Why? Even more. Go, like, we don't even know it's just 50%. It could be like, there's probably 90% chance because, like, there's not that, you know, like, who even knows? You get to decide that percentage and, you know. Yeah, yeah that's such a good point. Zill, were you yeah. going to add something? Yeah, so I travel quite a bit. I'm gone quite a bit and I have three kids. So what helped me coach myself around this was a decision. Uh, so my journey was that whenever I left in the past, I had to leave everything ready for my husband to take care of the kids for groceries uh, done. And, you know, everything had to be in place for me to leave. That's because I did not believe or decided that my husband was 100% capable of doing the work himself. So I started looking at him as somebody 100% capable of taking care of the kids in his own way, right? Whether they're having cereal for dinner or, you know, a full meal, it doesn't matter. They get fed. So I think we need to detach from, you know, our ways and really trust our partners and believe that they are 100% capable of taking care of the kids and really letting go of our, you know, patterns and our, you know, boxes that they have to fit. Because every time I came back home, the kids were fine and they're happy to see me. The other side of the coin is also, we need to remember that raising kids also includes teaching them how to be um, independent, and how to be resilient and how to deal with their emotions as well. So I also see this as, you know, a chance for the kids to grow. And I also believe that my kids are 100% capable of having a good time with dad, checking in with mom on the phone and knowing that mom is back in a few days or maybe in a week. So this mindset is what has helped me to allow myself to go whatever I want. I'm sorry, but Zill, what you were just saying is such um, powerful leadership training as well for anyone that leads teams. And one of the big things that, um, that you know, we're working with businesses now and we're speaking to is this idea of like, maybe you, or even that we're dealing with as a company, like not everything needs to be done 
at a hundred percent level and not everything needs to be done the way it's already been done what are the results that it's producing and that dinner example is so good of like they are being fed <laughs> and some days that's like a home-cooked dinner and some days that's cereal and you know what the, probably the balance is like what works for them um so I just love that beautiful example because it applies to family life and it applies when you are part of any team, I think, which is allowing other people the space to step up. And maybe it doesn't look the same, but is the outcome still like what you wanted? And isn't that great? Because then now Zill gets to travel. And then now we get to, that's part of creating space and creating time that a lot of teams struggle with is letting other people do things differently. But like, why? Thank you, Zill. Bashak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know the case well of having kids, so I don't have kids myself. But the thought I wanted to offer is from a coaching I got from Vicky some months ago. Because my brain also likes going into the, like, the all possible terrible scenarios that can happen. But what if like thinking about the perfect scenario, like what can go right? And like focusing more and more that like, what kind of value that might bring. And like what would the ideal scenario for you be like? if you go for one week away what do you want to do and imagining that I think for me it has been a big shift in anything I do because then I'm not in the oh my god it's gonna suck scenario but like how do I bring the optimal thing basically yes I love it it's like really spending time in the juicy dream of possibility yeah. away from the brain's tendency to be all in the details of the potential danger thank you Bashak so good and it's so applicable I hope what everyone's taking from this discussion is like where else can I apply these lessons where else can I apply these lessons because the beautiful thing about coaching and about learning about what we do in time hackers is like one lesson from one area impacts so many things um so thank you for that Mary yeah I just wanted to add that it, very much in the same um strain um, but how this is setting a whole role model for our own kids, the people around us, the colleagues, friends we have who haven't had the opportunity of changing the rule book for them. And so I think, Vicky, like you're saying, it, it's like a, a pebble in the water. You know, the ripples go out quite far. Uh, I was speaking to with one of my daughters today and she told me that she's booked. So I'm a believer in taking time out, focusing. Um, she has booked age 24, an Airbnb for three nights to go and spend time with herself. And this has this is a ripple that has come out of a change in um, values and how I look after myself, which is, I think, amazing that we can see it go on and on in the lives of others. And it is initially uh, uncomfortable. I think as Zil was saying, that discomfort, it, it doesn't go away, but we grow much more accustomed to it. <laughs> it becomes quite familiar. But so to see it rolling over into other lives is quite significant too. Yes, it's... Um... It's very powerful. And I think sometimes, you know, by design, by conditioning, by evolution, our brain will be so critical of ourselves and so like tight on ourselves and, and like what's the least that I could give myself instead of what's the most. And I remember when I was on um, maternity leave and then put on bed rest and I remember like making decisions around the business and what we we're going to be closing. And I remember the question that I asked myself, which follows on from what Mary was saying, was what's what's the example that I want to be for the world? Not for myself. For myself, I'm thinking, oh, I could push through. I could do this. I could do, I could as reason enough. And when I started to think about like, what's the example I want to be? I was like, ah, oh, we're shutting everything down. <laughs> oh, like the podcast isn't being done. Like, yes, I could speak for 10 minutes. And, and the example that I want to be for the world is that. And I think it's just a powerful way to actually bring our intention of what we want to create away from our conditioning so I love that Mary and it must be very fun to see it in real time thanks so much Joe. I feel like that gave us very juicy topic of conversation <laughs>